Hello and welcome everyone. Today we will be discussing about various cloud platforms uh, designed for Internet of Things. These are the learning outcomes. By the end of this session, students will be able to classify various IoT cloud platforms. So I'll be discussing about some of the top uh, IoT cloud platforms available in today's market. So as of now, we have uh, Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure and also IBM uh, Blue Cloud. Uh, as the one of the most trending IoT solutions provider. So let's get into the details. So I'll be first of all giving you an introduction of uh, how uh, this IoT platform is important and how, what role it actually plays and where exactly it uh, lies in your cloud platform architecture. And then we'll be going through an example uh, which will be uh, discussed with the help of an online uh, browser-based uh, dashboard system Okay, so if you look at the cloud computing architecture, as you are able to see on the screen, that you have basically three things. The first one is uh, the application layer, and the second one is going to be the platform layer, and the third one is going to be the infrastructure. So as you can see on the slide, uh, basically cloud computing is composed of three layers. So the first layer is an application layer, the second layer is a platform layer, and the third layer is an infrastructure layer. So apart from these three layers, you also have some hidden layers where uh, uh, the things are actually working in the back end, like maybe in the firmware of a microcontroller and the other stuff. So in a broad overview, as you can observe, uh, out of these three areas, there is uh, the first layer called application layer, where we generally focus on some of the devices like monitoring, co collaboration, communication, and finance. Whereas in the second layer, uh, we have object storage, identity, runtime, queue, databases, or exactly whatever data you are pumping onto the cloud servers, the data, whatever you are storing, uh, so these storage servers are going to be uh, the part of our platform. And the third one is going to be the infrastructure where the exact physical devices like, like maybe uh, you have some thousand computers or maybe some well, like hard disks and rest of the things. So let's go into the details and see uh, where exactly it lies. So we are going to further discuss today like uh, these three services as we have seen earlier application platform and infrastructure layers of a cloud computing are actually provided as a service so these are sometimes known as application as a service platform as a service and infrastructure as a service for a cloud-based architecture for maybe you are talking about a web service or even an iot based system so to go into more details uh, let's uh, have a look at a uh, small example where uh, you have few devices, but you have few devices. Uh, so these devices may be, uh, for example, if you consider a cell phone, or you might be having a medical instrument, or it could be any uh, underlying global positioning tracker that's affixed inside a vehicle. So any of these kind of things uh, actually compose the devices category. So apart from this, uh, in the second layer, what we have is any sort of connectivity. I mean, whatever sensors that we actually affix inside these devices, which are supposed to sense the data, uh, maybe regarding the environment or maybe the uh, physical conditions of your vehicle, uh, maybe the physical condition of a patient, or maybe some of the uh, positioning systems of your uh, cell phone. It could be anything. So this particular amount of data is going to be acting as an information and this information in the form of either in the binary logic or maybe in the form of uh, raw data or an encrypted format is going to be pumped onto our internet. So here what we need to take care that whatever data this, uh, that these devices are actually sensing that has to be passed on to our cloud. So if we are unable to uh, uh, pass this particular data to the cloud, uh, then there is no uh, possibility of storing these kind of data anywhere. So now what we are about to focus is uh, these devices are going to sense some sort of data and that is either connected through a Wi-Fi or it is connected through maybe a, a your ISP provider based internet or it could be directly uh, transferred to the cloud servers through the satellite. So once this data is transferred to the cloud you need to talk about certain protocols like either we are using an XML like we have seen in our earlier video, whether we are using MQTT or any uh, IoT based protocol like COAP and other stuff. 
So COIP and MQTT being one of the most popular IoT protocols, uh, we need to check like whether our cloud, whichever we are going to select uh, as a platform, must be supporting those protocols which we want to be understood. So the main reason why we are discussing upon this example is that it's fine that we might be having numerous amount of devices, but whether you want to transfer that data through the means of a Bluetooth or whether you want to transfer the data uh, with the help of Wi-Fi network or whether you want that data to be transferred to a central gateway and later on that gateway is going to take care of uh, transferring the data to the cloud. These kind of scenarios and the variety of the communication and the kind of uh, topology that we are going to implement in our ground level architecture or so called the edge devices plays an important role in the selection of platform uh, for our cloud. So what I mean to say is that, for example, let us uh, say that I'm, I'm using some device which is measuring maybe the speed of a particular vehicle. I have the data like maybe 10 kilometers uh, per hour or 100 kilometers per hour that is being transferred to the cloud. I'm, I mean, uh, I'm trying to transfer the data to the cloud uh, through a Wi-Fi network, for example. And the protocol that I'm writing inside the controller, which lies along, I mean, which resides along with this particular sensor, uh, and it understands only the MQTT protocol, for example. And let us say that your cloud doesn't have any knowledge regarding the MQTT. So whenever you have a scene, like you are able to talk uh, with the protocol standards of MQTT, but your cloud is unable to understand what is the meaning of MQTT then in such, a, uh, in such a situation, you are going to uh, uh, stuck in a platform. I mean, uh, understanding what protocol your platform understands is a very important role to understand uh, before selection of the platform. Now, uh, let us say that I am transferring the data from a particular speed measurement device to my cloud, which is following the MQTT standard, and also my cloud understands what is MQTT, for example then I'm good to go with the features that my cloud service is being uh, providing me. So what I mean to say is that I am transferring the speed uh, of my vehicle, like maybe 15 kilometers, 10 kilometers, 30 kilometers uh, on a live basis to my cloud. And my uh, cloud is able to actually gather that whole amount of data onto its own uh, database servers. Now I want to use a couple of features uh, that my cloud server is going to provide. For example, my, uh, my data is going to be stored in its storage service, whereas, uh, for example, if I have a service uh, that is being provided by my cloud server, maybe like data analytics, and I want to extract the data onto a visual screen, maybe I want to design a web page where I want to actually visualize the data, like how many people on a specific given highway are traveling with a speed greater than 80 kilometers per hour, if that's my task, then this is something known as an analytics. So IoT in general is not only internet plus physical objects plus some sort of intelligence written inside the firmware, I mean in the form of firmware inside a microcontroller like we have seen as per our IoT equation in our earlier video, but also it has uh, some sort of intelligence that is being provided either in the form of a feature being provided by the cloud or it is going to be uh, uh, feature that is being uh, written by your own web server that you are building on the cloud. So to uh, enlist a couple of uh, top web services which are mostly used nowadays as of making this particular video are given in priority basis. So as you can see, the first one being uh, Amazon Web Service is the top one, whereas the second one is Microsoft Azure and the third one is IBM, like I have stated in the uh, beginning of this video. Now let us have a quick look at how uh, to use and understand these IoT platforms. So we are going to compare, I mean, uh, whenever you are about to select a particular cloud platform for your own IoT application, then we are going to understand uh, and select that particular uh, uh, particular cloud platform depending upon the following features. So what we have here is we have a provider, like for example, I want to identify, if I just uh, come to know maybe by some of my colleagues who is 
who is already using a cloud server for his own IoT application, then I'm going to pro probably ask him like, what is going to be the, who is the actual provider of the service? So if I find like Microsoft or IBM or Amazon, as I'm already aware of these companies and I feel that, yes, definitely these are going to be the standard ones. So I'm going to uh, select it either on the basis of provider. Similarly, it is going to be either on the basis of hosting. I mean, what kind of hosting they are providing? Hosting in the sense of uh, uh, the storage content uh, whichever they are providing, either it is uh, a basis, I mean, whether the storage element is actually st actually uh, dependent on a Linux operating system or a Windows operating system, whether I need to purchase these storage servers, or uh, on what uh, data limits, are there any data limits uh, I'm having uh, if I choose a particular IoT Cloud platform, all these things I need to keep in mind. So similarly, uh, as we have discussed with this, uh, within that example, like what kind of protocols it is supporting, the server language, uh, whether like .NET, maybe uh, you, you're using Node, Node-RED or Node.js, AngularJS, whatever uh, recent cloud technology programming languages are in the trend nowadays, whether it is being supported or not. So along with that, I also want to understand uh, what are the client languages, whether there is a mobile SDK present so that I can design my own Android app for this one. Similarly, the kinds of data storage, their limits, whether any binary data storage is available for, uh, for example, I want to store my own raw image of a, uh, a image or maybe a JPEG file in the form of a binary, then I probably go for its uh, uh, blob capability. Similarly, I have geo-tracking available or not, whether it is allowing push notifications, triggers and visualizations. From. So what you need to keep in mind um, as a takeaway of this session is that uh, you need to focus on a certain facts like protocols, the standards, the languages, and the kind of uh, wireless technology that your server is providing. Just as a small overview, uh, this is Amazon IoT service, which is giving us uh, the following things. It has two small sections called Things and Cloud. Things is the uh, where Amazon actually supports two things like either Amazon Greengrass or it gives us Amazon Free Atos. So we'll be going into a little bit detail about uh, what are all the services in short and then we'll be discussing about what is the basic costing structure in our upcoming video. Here are the references that was used for this session. Thank you.